Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. God be with you. And also Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I tried to become a priest 16 years ago, but the church said no. <laughs> um, I was a graduate student just finishing a degree in, a master's degree in philosophy. And um, so I, you know, I don't know exactly what the problem was. I think I was too young was a bit of it, or if, from their perspective, I was too young, you know. Everybody else's perspective is like, time to get to work, you know. <laughs> I'm in my 20s. Uh, so I said, well, I've got a few extra years. I'll do a PhD in philosophy, you know. Like, why not? Uh, so I went to my advisor and I said, I want to do, God, I want to be a priest. So if I could do something like on God and religion, that'd be great. And he was like into it. Um, so that's what I did. And I stayed in a library um, listening to dead people for like five years, you know, and talking to them sometimes and talking to other people. And I was a chaplain and it was, it was great. But at the end of that five years, I was like ready to take the show on the road, you know? And so I wanted to talk to like anybody who would listen, <laughs> you know, uh, but churches and other groups about uh, kind of some of my thoughts about how to think about God and religion and stuff. And one of the groups that I was most excited to was in the philosophy department, there were several guys who were part of um, a local community uh, called the Society of Free Thinkers. The Society of Free Thinkers, mostly atheists and agnostics. And um, uh, I, I told them what I wanted to do. It took quite a bit of negotiation, <laughs> as you can imagine. And eventually uh, they said yes, and it was at uh, like a public library, and I showed up. And there's like basically about 100 people there, and I'd say uh, one, a third of, there's three different kind of groups, almost split into thirds. The first group thought, 
have I come to the wrong group? <laughs> like, I literally showed up for the reverse of what's happening, what has happened, you know? And then another third um, uh, uh, jeered at me the entire time. Uh, it was pretty, it was, it was great, you know? I mean, it was wild. Uh, there was like kind of some laughing and some like, that's dumb. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then there was another third that had never heard the version of God I was presenting. And they were floored in like a good way. Now, like, I didn't do an altar call. It wasn't about that, you know. But um, they had heard uh, a similar story that I had heard growing up. They had, most of them had grown up in church, and they had heard about the God who was super excited about damning everybody to hell, you know. And that was not the God I was there to talk about. And uh, they had never heard the other version. Which brings us to the gospel. Jesus begins his public ministry today in the gospel with these words, repent the kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom of God has come near. I spent a lot of my time in the church thinking that one of the, the journey of faith is going from the kingdom of God feeling very far away to the kingdom of God feeling near. The end of my presentation, my friend that I knew from the philosophy department came up to the mic and he said, I just have one question for you, Josh. Do you believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead? Now that was not a moment for me to say, what do you think about, <laughs> what does Jesus Christ being raised from the dead mean to you, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I just said, Yes, I do. I got like this epic eye roll, you know, and I lost them. Uh, you know, there was no coming back from that. But the kingdom has, of God has come near. The journey of faith, taking what seems far away and distant and metaphysical and this like insane thing that you've got to get your arms around far and away to something that is near. Jesus announces this at the beginning to the disciples who know nothing. The kingdom of God is near. One of those things, so there's the resurrection, there's the incarnation, some of these big ideas that are hard to like get our arms around, but I think the call from Jesus is to see them as near is what he, Jesus begins with, repent. One of the hardest concepts I think that we have as Christians is thinking about sin. Is thinking about sin. I grew up thinking that sin is God being particularly interested in shaming me for my personal failings. That sin is God being interested in shaming me for my personal failings. The more I study Scripture, the more I read the Bible, the more sermons I hear, the least I am convinced by that. Again and again, Jesus is interested, mostly when he's calling people to repentance and addressing sin and community, about institutionalized sin. Jesus walks into the institutionalized religious form, into the synagogue. He calls the leaders of Galilee, the Herodians, to account. One of my favorite stories is when Jesus walks into the synagogue on the Sabbath, when there's supposed to be no work happening, and he sees a man with a withered hand, and he says to come forward, and it says the scribes were watching him to see whether he would, to see whether he would cure him so that they could accuse him. So Jesus sees that this is happening. He calls the man with the withered hand forward, and he turns to the scribes, and he says, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to kill? The most basic question, us as a religious community, are we here for life or are we here for death? And Scripture says they were silent. Jesus turns to the man with the withered hand and he heals him. The scribes immediately go out 
conspire with the Herodians, the aristocratic class, on how to kill Jesus. That's one of the very first things that happens. When Jesus' family hears about it, they go out to restrain him. It says, for people were saying he's gone out of his mind. His family was, a, was a, a, a fearful of what would eventually happen and that Jesus doing these type of radical things would get him killed. When they came to the house that he was in, they said, your family's outside. And Jesus said, who is my family? Whoever does the will of God is my mother, my brother, and sister. Jesus is interested in addressing and calling to repentance those things, those big institutional structural things that leave people in poverty, that ostracize, that marginalize the poor, the sick, what society often calls the lowly. Jesus addresses those things. Now, what's really cool about our story today, it begins with repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. It's institutional. But the action item is Jesus looking at the disciples and saying, follow me. I will make you fishers of people. The response must be personal. It has a personal claim on each one of us. And notice the, 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 the structuralness of what Jesus has them do. They leave their father, Zebedee. They leave their family, they leave their money, they leave their jobs, their financial security to follow Jesus. When I think about sin, I think about institutionalized racism. I think about institutionalized poverty. I think about a country and a society where for so many, if you get sick, you will die because you are poor. That is what Jesus was willing to risk everything for. Repent, the kingdom of God has come near. I think that that word repentance and the word sin, if it comes near to us, if we can see it as not some arcane theological concept, but something interwoven with our lives that has wounded us, that we have seen wound others, if repentance comes near to us, we know that it is near when we turn and follow Jesus. We're willing to leave the tribalism of blood only, of only looking out after our own. We're willing to leave the tribalism of money. Follow Jesus into a new kingdom. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.
Gracious, loving God, you know the needs of our hearts and invite us to hear your voice and to follow you. Receive our prayers as we pray. God of grace, you love us and invite us to extend that love in friendship, generosity, and hospitality to all. Fill us with your grace that we may be a community of kindness and compassion. Guide our efforts as we strive to understand and dismantle the structures of racism in the Church and the world. O God of light, God of peace, we ask you to guide all leaders in our nation, the Church, and all leaders throughout the world, that they will be instruments of justice and peace. Help us to walk in your light and invite others to share that light with us. O God of light, God of creation, you have woven our bodies in the depths of the earth. Look upon the needs of a suffering world and bless all humanity. Bless us with the abundance of your spirit and presence that we may reveal you to our families, friends, and neighbors. O God of light, good and holy God, you fashion our lives day by day in your spirit. Increase in us your vision that we may see your hand at work in our community. O God of light, we pray for all who are ill, especially Catherine, Anna Gardano, Ken DeSell, Max, Bob Erskine, Jack, Rose, Lisa, Robin Smith, Jeff Mascot, Peggy Wilson, Jack Ryan Connolly and family, Shelley, John Montgomery, Chris Moore, Gail Glenn, Jenna, Roger and Sandy, Claire Emlin, Carly Putnam, the people of Ukraine, and those we now name silently or aloud. O oh, oh God of light, Hear our accept our prayers of thanksgiving, especially for Bishop Marianne and diocesan representatives as they gather in convention on January 28th. The Master Planning Committee, who seek to be good and creative stewards of our St. Columba's property and assets. Those who walk with us on our journeys through darkness and light. And those blessings we name now, either silently or aloud. O oh God of light, Welcome into your beloved community those who have died. We pray especially for Ted Beatty, Nate Kelleher, Joe Beach, Richard Weigman, Linda bowden Locks, Gordon McKemmy, John Cornett, Penny Preston, Joycey, victims of gun violence, especially those killed in the Monterey Park mass shooting, and those we now name either silently or aloud. O oh God of light, gracious and loving God, we come before you with no gifts but ourselves. Accept and receive our lives we may be manifestations of your presence. Let the light of your spirit shine within and among us so we may share in the mystery of your purpose for all creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Thank you. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet each other in the name of the Lord. It is a great joy to welcome you to St. Columbus Church this morning. Special joy to welcome those of you who are worshiping among us for the very first time today. And if you are here for the first time, thank you for joining us. We're really glad that you are here. Please help us welcome you by taking a moment and fill out a welcome card. You can place that in the offering plate as your gift to us today. St. Columbus is a church on a mission to live God's love, and we are eager to support you and support one another as we seek to carry that out. I want to alert you just to uh, an invitation next Sunday uh, during the forum hour. Our newly elected uh, city council representative, Matt Fruman, uh, will be joining us uh, and addressing us here at 1015, uh, addressing the topic of fair housing, among other things. So please join us for that. Also, um, it is wonderful, Mitchell Felton is um, here. Mitchell's been with us for some time, and he's going to be joining us in a full-time capacity as our director of youth ministry uh, later this spring when he graduates from seminary. Uh, but if you haven't had a chance to meet Mitchell, uh, please introduce yourself to him. It's great that Mitchell is here uh, to be with us. Let us now walk in love, as Christ has loved us and given himself for us a gift and sacrifice unto God. Thank you. 
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of blessing, we thank you always for making us in your image to serve the peace of all creation. You shared your name with our mothers and fathers, Sarah and Abraham, who left their home and became a blessing to all nations, Moses and Miriam, who went through sea and wilderness to the place of revelation, Deborah and Samson, who gave hope and justice to a people ruled by fear, Ruth and Jonah, who went to foreign soul, soil and found a God who loves the stranger. From our ancestors in faith came Jesus, the son of promise, to fulfill the law, embody your love, and draw all people to himself. He accepted death to break its fearful hold. He was raised to life to share it in abundance. He comes again to break the bread and pour the wine of hope. Therefore, with all people whose story you have shaped, with women and men of faith in every part of the world, we glory in your generous love and sing in praise of you. ask that your Holy Spirit will fall upon us and upon these gifts, that these fragile earthly things may be to us the body and blood of our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed gathered with his faltering friends for a meal that tasted of hope. Calling them to his table, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup saying, drink this all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. As on that night, so here and now, Jesus offers all that he was, all that he is, and all that he will be. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Therefore, we come in memory and hope, responding to your call and the promise that echoes from the dawn of all time. May mind and heart be held by your self-giving love as we stand before the cross, approach the empty tomb, and praise the one whose name is lifted high above all earthly power. Receive our broken offering through your never-ending grace and bind us in communion with all who share your gifts through Almighty God, in whom from the beginning of time and through the great expanse of space, all things are drawn into the ceaseless love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. With the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God, whoever you are, wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome at Christ's table.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted Be careful as you go out into the world, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourselves and one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High. And be silent, because sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Filled with the light of Christ, let us go forth to live God's love. Alleluia! Alleluia! Thanks, God.